Canadian David St. Jacques has a seat booked on probably the most physically and psychologically demanding trip out there. In mid-December, he'll blast off to the International Space Station. It feels like many G's. I mean, it feels like you are, uh, like someone is sitting on your chest. For months now, he's been training in Russia, which is providing the Soyuz rocket to get him there. St. Jacques will be in the co-pilot seat next to pilot and four-time space traveler Russian Oleg Kononenko and U.S. rookie Anne McClare. It feels to me like the launch pad is on top of Mount Everest. So I'm climbing Everest now. Canadian media were invited to Russia's space training center outside Moscow at Star City to meet the crew and to tour the mock-up of the space station where the astronauts train. While Saint Jacques can speak five languages, for the last two years he's been trying to master Russian. All the training is in Russian, and the crew is expected to speak it in the capsule when they talk to mission control. It really, communication skills are really important in that environment. And the history of human spaceflight demonstrates that most of the problems we've had you know, you could bring down, boil down to communication problems. When it comes to cooperation between the Russian and Canadian governments, these days there really isn't much to talk about. Relations are in a deep freeze. Exploring space is a rare exception. The Russian mission commander told us a space station is meant to be a politics-free zone where what's happening in the world beneath doesn't matter. Of course, you cannot completely get rid of politics, said Kononenko, but we find points that coincide and get solutions. We're fortunate, uh, astronauts and cosmonauts, that we are we're part of one of those few strings that are still exist between the nations. St. Jacques will finish training here and then head back to North America to prepare many medical experiments on the effects of space travel, experiments that he'll both oversee and undergo. Chris Brown, CBC News, Moscow. Now, experiments make up just a fraction of St. Jacques' roles because with the ISS being such a small, self-sufficient community, each of its members needs to wear many hats. So St. Jacques will be drawing from his past career as a physician, acting as the crew's medical officer on the space station. Also, who better to operate the Canada arm than a Canadian? St. Jacques holds the highest level of qualification to work that system. He blasts off for the ISS on December 20th, and he's expected to spend about six and a half months on board.